Hi everyone, welcome to AI Crack Channel. This is Akash Gangwar, and today we'll be studying limits lecture three, and we'll be talking about uh, standard limits and expansion series in this lecture. So let us begin a lecture with sine x by x and x by sine x when x is approaching zero. Now the interesting thing to note over here is both of them are actually equals to one. But since we know that both of them are actually reciprocal to each other, and it's highly improbable that for x approaching zero, sine x would be exactly equals to x. right it would be highly improbable or impractical you can say that sin x would be equals to x that's why this ratio is 1 when x is approaching 0 so in that case one has to be bigger than the other one right makes sense now to understand that let's try to plot the graph of x and sin x individually so we have y equals to x looking like this one right so this is our y equals to x now if you want to plot sin x it would look something of this sort now interesting thing to note over here is x is always greater than equals to sin x in this case and this equality this equality is coming when x is zero but what we are dealing with we are dealing with x is approaching zero x is not equals to zero x is approaching zero so for x not equals to zero it is safe to say that x is greater than sin x right now when x is greater than sin x x by sin x would be greater than 1 it is safe to say that right now if we take g gia function of x by sin x that would be one but if we take sin x by x gif of that it would be zero because this is lesser than one although it's closer to one but still lesser than one limiting value is one only right in this case for x by sin x limiting value the actual value would be somewhere you know 1.000001 something of this sort and for sin x by x it would be 0.99999 so limiting value is one only for this case and for this case but when we take gif this would come out to be zero and for this one it would come out to be one right now you can prove this with the help of lopatel as well when we are finding limits in that case we can differentiate both numerator and denominator we'll be getting cos x by 1 now this is exact one and this is something lesser than one something lesser than one right so in that case this entire quantity would be less than one and same goes for the x by sin x when we apply lopatel this is exact one this is cos x and when x is approaching 0 this won't be exact one this would be something lesser than one right so in that case this would come out to be greater than one now the opposite case is for tan x by x again x is approaching 0 and we have to understand tan x by x and x by tan x same logic both of them are actually one limiting value is one but one has to be bigger than the other one because it's highly impractical to say that tan x would be equals to x when x is approaching 0 right now we know that x equals to tan x only in case when x is 0 right when we are talking about x is approaching 0 so when x is exactly equals to 0 x equals to tan x that is the only case in other cases tan x is greater than x if we plot the graph over here it would look like something of this sort this is our tan x so you can clearly see that tan x is greater than our x right in terms of magnitude okay so that's why tan x by x would be greater than 1 and x by tan x would be less than 1 very close to 1 but greater than 1 and lesser than 1 right if you take gif of this one it would come out to be 0 if you take gif of this one it would come out to be 1 right and now that we have understood these two limits properly their graphs their values their gifs everything you can also try these things for these two limits as well to understand their behavior but the main thing is common sin x by x tan x by x sin vs x by x tan vs x by x and their reciprocals all of them when is x is approaching 0 they all are equals to 1 the limiting value is always 1 when x is approaching 0 right now let's look at second standard limit of today's lecture that is 1 minus cos x divided by x square okay so in this case we can use two methods to derive this one so let's look at the method 1 i can write 1 minus cos x as 2 sin square x by 2 divided by x square right now we have limit x approaches 
I'll be multiplying and dividing by four over here. X by two whole square. So what I did, I divided by four over here and multiplied by four over here. Okay, and we have two sine square x by two. Now this entire limit is one, right? So that's why two by four multiplied by one. That is one by two is the answer. So what we did over here, we just uh, converted this x square into x by two whole square because we had an argument of x by two over here, and then used the standard limit over here to find out the value. Right? That was the first approach. Now one thing I forgot to talk in the previous standard limit that was when we are saying sine x by x is one, limit x approaches zero. That x means anything. It can be, let's say, sine of tan x divided by tan x. Limit x approaches zero. So what are the conditions? These two arguments should be same. If we have tan x over here, we should have tan x in the denominator. If we have x square, we should have x square in the denominator, and both should approach zero. As x is approaching zero, in that case, this value would be one. Okay, and same goes for the other standard limits as well. Now, in this case, we use that only. We had x by two in the argument, so that's why I had to convert x by two over here whole square, and then we use the standard limit, right? Now, in case of method two, very simple. You can use L'Hopital over here. One minus cos x that would be zero plus sine x divided by two x. Now again, it's a zero by zero format. You can use L'Hopital once again. That would become cos x divided by two, limit x approaching zero. In this case, answer would be one by two, right? Now let's look at this example. We have limit x approaches zero, tan x minus sin x divided by x cube. Now whenever there is a case when I'm not able to proceed with the trigonometric expression, I tend to convert that expression to sin and cos, right? So let's do that over here. I don't see anything else over here, so let's convert. That into sine x by cos x format. Okay, so we'll be using sine x by cos x minus sine x divided by x cube. Limit x approaches zero. Now let's take sine x as common and see if anything useful forms cos x minus one divided by x cube. Now what I can do, I can split this x cube into two parts. The first one would be x and Other would be x square. Why? Because I can see one minus cos x forming over here. I can see sine x by x over here. So I am seeing two standard limits forming over here. Limit x approaching zero. Now this one becomes sine x by x. Now this one becomes one minus cos x divided by cos x, and we have one by x square, right? So eventually it becomes one upon cos x, one limit. Sine x by x, second limit, and third limit would be one minus cos x by x square, right? Limit x approaches zero. Okay. Now this one is one only because one by cos zero is one. This one is one. We have uh, proved that, and this one is one by two. Now we have used the algebra of limits very conveniently over here. This one was existing. This one was existing. This one was existing. So that's why. The product would exist as one dot one dot one by two. The answer is one by two. Now let's solve this question. So we have limit x approaching pi by two, one plus cos two x divided by pi minus two x whole square. Now I have made a thumb rule for myself. Whenever I see one plus cos two theta, I tend to write two cos square theta. Right. So let's do that over here. X approaching pi by two. So this becomes two cos square x divided by Pi minus two x whole square. Now this is not a standard format. We have cos square in the numerator, but we have some kind of argument in the denominator. So we should have sine square and similar kind of argument in the numerator to make some sense, right? So for that, let's do some adjustments. So we'll be writing this as two sine square pi by two minus x. And to create this argument in the denominator, I'll take four as common. Because we have square over here, so I'll I'll have to take four as common. So this would become four pi by two minus x whole square. Now this entire equation becomes one, right? This entire limit becomes one because we have sine something approaching zero divided by some, that zero only, right? Because x is approaching pi by two, so and this limit is one by two, so the answer would be one by two. Now let's solve this question. So we have limit x approaching two. X square minus x minus two divided by x square minus two x minus sine of x minus two. So we have limit x approaching two, and we have x minus two 
as a factor over here, as a factor over here, and also as a factor over here, right? So it has to do something with x minus two, right? So let's take that factor out. So we'll be having x minus two in the numerator multiplied by x plus one. So this can be written as in this format, and we have x times x minus two minus sine of x minus two. So we can clearly see that x minus two is that factor which is creating this zero by zero format, right? Let's try to take that as common. Basically, dividing the entire numerator and denominator with x minus two, so that would give us x plus one divided by x minus sine of x minus two divided by x minus two, right? Now you can see that this limit is not zero by zero, right? Because this is a standard limit. This becomes one, this becomes three, and this becomes two. So this is not a zero by zero format. So we can now apply the values over here. So this would become three by uh, divided by two minus one. So three is the correct answer. Now let's solve this question. So we have limit x approaching one a raised by x minus one minus one divided by sine of pi x. We have limit x approaching one a raised by x minus one minus one divided by sine of pi x. Now I can see this as a part of a standard limit and this also as a part of standard limit. But in this case, to create a standard limit, I'll have to divide by x minus one. But for this case, I'll have to divide by pi x. So we have a factor of x minus one, but over here we have a factor of x. So something is mismatching. Let's try to sort that out. So we have a raised by x minus one minus one divided by. We can write sine theta as sine pi minus theta, right? Same sine theta equals to sine of pi minus theta, right? We have seen that in the allied angles. So this becomes sine of pi minus pi x. Okay. Now. We have a raised by x minus one minus one divided by. We can take pi as common, so it becomes one minus x. Okay. Now we need x minus one, but we have got one minus x over there. So let's take additional minus sign over there, and let's write this as x minus one. Right. Now our equation becomes limit x approaching one. A raised by x minus one minus one divided by minus sine pi times x minus one. Let's multiply and divide by. Pi times x minus one in both numerator and denominator, right? So, pi times x minus one multiplied by pi times x minus one. So this becomes minus one by pi, this pi and this minus sign over here, and we have a raised by x minus one minus one divided by x minus one, this x minus one and this a raised by x minus one minus one over here, multiplied by one upon sine pi times x minus one. Divide by pi times x minus one. Now this is a standard limit. This is a standard limit, and this is actual value, right? So minus one by pi is the answer. So this is one. This is one. So we have got minus one by pi as the answer, right? Now let's talk about Taylor series expansion. And as far as PGDB is concerned, you don't need to understand the derivation part of these series. You just need to remember these series by heart. A raised by x, e raised by x, ln of one plus x over one minus x. You can you know change the signs over here, sine x, cos x, and tan x. That should be enough. Now you will be encountering these in case of progressions as well. So basically, these limit these series are not just important to limits, but they are also important for the rest of the mathematics levels of PGDB. So just try to remember these by heart, right? And now let's take one example on how to proceed with Taylor expansion series. Right? So we have Limit x approaching zero, e raised by x minus e raised by minus x minus two x divided by x cube. So we'll use expansion over here. For e raised by x, we have one plus x plus x square by two factorial plus x cube by three factorial, and so on. For e raised by minus x, we have one minus x because we have minus x over here. So we'll change the sign. One minus x plus x square by two factorial, minus x cube by three factorial, and so on, and minus two x, whole divided by x cube. Now we have limit x approaching zero. Now you can see that this one and this one is getting cancelled out. Now this x along with this x, because minus minus plus, is getting cancelled out with this one, right? So this is also cancelled out. Now this x square by two factorial. And this x square by two factor is getting cancelled out because we have minus n over here, and we can see that odd powers are being remaining over here. Okay, 
so we have x cube by 3 factorial from here and also one more x cube by 3 factorial and higher powers over here divide by x cube now when we divide by x cube we'll be getting 1 by 3 factorial plus 1 by 3 factorial plus higher powers of x and we know that x is approaching 0 so that would become 0 eventually so this becomes 2 by 3 factorial that is 2 by 3 is the correct answer 3 factorial is 6 so we have got 2 by 3 is the correct answer right so this is how you have to use Taylor series expansion for solving these kind of problems. You might be using L'Hopital or you might be using some other methods in solving these kind of problems. But there might be cases where other methods won't work and you have to rely on Taylor series expansion, right? So that's why you have to understand all sorts of ways. You have to use stand limits. You have to understand expansion series. Also, you have to understand rationalization, fact factorization and L'Hopital, right? So you have to understand these methods to be able to solve all sorts of questions and all sorts of situations in case of limits, right? So today's lecture was still here only. And in the next lecture, we'll be solving more problems on these expansion series. And also we'll be talking about the last set of indeterminate forms that is one raised by infinity, uh, zero raised power zero and infinity raised power zero. So we'll be talking about the remaining ones and that would mark the end of limits chapter for PGDBA, right? So let's meet in the next lecture. Thanks for watching.